हेलो एवरीवन नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू अ लेक्चर और डिस्कशन ऑन इनहेरिटेंस कंसेप्ट फ्रॉम दिस स्लाइड नाउ आवर नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज द सुपर कीवर्ड सो व्हाई द सुपर कीवर्ड इज यूज्ड और हाउ इट इज यूज्ड इन द इनहेरिटेंस और एंड हाउ इट इज यूजफुल फॉर इनहेरिटेंस एंड इन जावा ओके द सब क्लास कैन एक्सेस ऑल मेंबर्स ऑफ द सुपर क्लास एक्सेप्ट द प्राइवेट डेटा मेंबर्स सो वेन द सुपर क्लास इज क्रिएटेड विच वॉन्ट्स टू कीप इट्स इम्प्लीमेंटेशन डिटेल्स टू इट सेफ ओनली दैट इज सपोज द सुपर क्लास कीप्स इट्स डेटा मेंबर्स एज अ प्राइवेट सो इन सच केसेस द सब क्लास कैनॉट एक्सेस दिस मेंबर्स डिरेक्टली बिकॉज द इनकेप्सुलेशन फीचर okay so java provides solution to this problem so whenever a subclass needs to refer to its immediate superclass so we can do this by using the keyword super so at such situation we can use the super keyword the super keyword is used to invoke the superclass constructor from subclass constructor and it is used if superclass has a parameterized constructor it can be used only from the subclass constructor and it has to be the first instruction or first statement in the subclass constructor so why uh, by using the super keyword we can uh, access the private data members of the superclass then this super keyword has the two general forms the first form is the it calls the superclass constructor and the second is the second form is used to access a member of the superclass that has been hidden by a member of the subclass so uh, let's see these two forms in detail in the next slide so using the super to call the superclass constructors the sub the subclass can call the superclass constructor by using the following format okay the constructor super uh, without no parameters or the super keyword or super method with the parameter list so here with the super the subclass uh, no argument constructor is called and with super parameter list the super class constructor with a matching parameter list is called okay so there is a condition is uh, there the super must be the first statement always the first statement inside a subclass constructor the next uh, next form of the super keyword is accessing the super class members uh, the super is same as the this keyword okay so except that it always refer to the subclass super class of the subclass in which it is used so this uses has the following format that super keyword dot member so uh, here member can be any instance variable or a member can be any method of that class so if your method overrides one of its super class methods then you can invoke the overridden method through the use of the keyword super so you can also use the super keyword to refer to a hidden field so this second form is very applicable to the situations in which uh the member names of a subclass hide the members by the same name in the superclass so in this situation we can use the keyword super and solve the uh, problem of the hidden members of the superclass now see here the example of this how we can overcome this problem or how we can overcome this difficulty by using the super keyword so example is there there is one class a is created and there is a i bar i variable is declared and uh, then the keyword sorry the class b is uh, extend by a uh, class b is a subclass of super class a and there is also variable same variable is declared here so this uh, declared variable i in the subclass b hides the declared variable i in sub super class a uh, and there is a uh, constructor is also uh there are, there are the two parameters a and b so here in the constructor the first statement there is one condition is there 
i have already told in the previous sli slide that there must be the first statement in the subclass constructor that is super keyword so here the super dot a is equal to the a means we can access the variable i who's uh, declared in the sub super class a so we can uh, access this by using the super keyword that is super dot i is equal to a and i is equal to b second statement is i variable declared in subclass b so there is a show method and we can show the i variable declared in the super class a and the i variable declared in the subclass b so there is a main method and in that main method the object of the subclass b is created and the parameters are passed 1 and 2 and the output will be our super class 1 and sub class 2 understood so by using the by uh, by using this example we can say that <coughs> we can access the variable whose are hidden by using the super uh, by using the keyword super next <clears throat> the subclass constructor uh, a subclass constructor is used to construct the instance variables of the subclass and the superclass also so by using the construct constructor of the subclass we can construct the both instance variables of subclass and the superclass so this uh, subclass constructor uses the keyword super for invoking the constructor of the superclass so i have already told that first statement of the uh, subclass construct is the super so this super keyword has the following criteria first super is used only within a subclass constructor okay then the next the call to super should appear as the first statement in the subclass constructor the third the parameter in super a uh, super call must match the order and type of instance variable declared in the super class so these are the three criteria for the keyword super the next the constructor execution so uh, when the uh, why it is uh, called that construction execution when constructors are called so this is the question when con constructors and are called and what are order the constructors are uh, executed so when a, a class uh, hierarchy is created and uh, in what order are the constructors for the classes that make up the hierarchy are called so for this answer is in the class hierarchy constructors are called in the order of derivation that is from super class to the sub class okay so there is a order that is first super class constructor is executed and then sub class constructor is executed so <clears throat> constructors are called in the order of the derivation from super class to the sub class and super must be the first statement executed in a sub class constructor this order is the same whether or not super keyword is used so there is a order of super class to the sub class if a super keyword is not used then the default or parameter less constructor of each super class will be executed these are all about the constructor execution then the method overriding what is meant by the method overriding uh, in a class hierarchy when a method in a subclass has the same name and type signature as a method in a superclass then the method in the subclass is said to override the method in the superclass when an overridden method is called then uh, it will always refer to the method defined by the subclass and the method defined by the superclass will be hidden do uh, to access the hidden method of the superclass the super keyword is used so here with the hidden method of the superclass can be accessed by using the keyword super so what is meant by the overriding overriding means in the superclass and the subclass the method name should be same and parameters also same if uh, in the superclass and subclass method names are same but parameters are different then it is not the overriding 
it is just a method overloading understood the difference between the method overloading and method overriding in overriding same name and same type signature but in function overloading same name but different parameter list okay next there is a dynamic method dispatch so this dynamic method dispatch is one of the most powerful concept of the java so this concept means a method overriding forms this concept uh, so we can say that method overriding forms the basis for one of the java's most powerful concept and that concept is the dynamic method dispatch the runtime polymorphism is achieved why it is uh, important for the java because the runtime polymorphism is achieved by using the dynamic method dispatch and the dynamic method dispatch it is a technique or it is a mechanism by which a call to an overridden method is resolved at run time instead of the compile time so dynamic method is dispatch is none other than run time polymorphism <coughs> so how we can achieve this runtime polymorphism see here the java uses the fact that a superclass reference variable can refer to a subclass object thus java determines calls to an overridden methods at run time not compile time so method to be executed is is determined at run time and depending upon the object referred at the time of the call suppose uh, an overridden method is called by the superclass reference so java resolves uh, which version of method as per type of the object being referred to at the time of the call occurs so thus this determination is made at the run time so it is depending upon the object being referred to okay suppose <coughs> so it is a dynamic method dispatch uh, which is uh, used to uh, implement the runtime polymorphism in java next the class object so uh, the class object is one of the special class in java that that class is the object and it is defined by the java all other uh, classes are the sub classes of this class object that is in other words we can say that object is a superclass of all other classes reference variable of type object can refer to an object of any other class so there are some methods defi defined by this class object so see here these are the methods uh, various methods defined by the class object so the first object uh, first method is the object clone so object clone creates a new object that is the same as object being cloned next the boolean equals so there is a parameter passed is the object so it determines whether one object is equal to another next void finalize <clears throat> now you can understand this final method i have used in the garbage collection method okay <clears throat> so this called before an unused object is recycled then class get class this method obtains the class of an object at run time next integer hash code it uh, it is used to return the hash code associated with the invoking object next void notify it resumes the execution of a thread waiting on the invoking object then void notify all it resumes execution of all threads waiting on the invoking object next string to string returns a string that describes the object then wait 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 it waits on another thread of execution so uh, now see here the methods get class notify notify all and the wait are declared as final so you can override the others <coughs> 
so there are the two methods uh, see here equals to string the equals method compares the contents of the two objects and it returns the true if the objects are equivalent and the false otherwise the to string method returns a string that contains a description of the object on which it is called also this method is automatically called when an object is output using println statement println method so many classes override this method so doing so allows them to tell a description specifically for the types of objects that they create so <coughs> these are all about the methods which are defined by the class object okay thank you